Oh, you, 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 you can beat me now, but then I would dunk on you. Yeah, You're a yeah. real, he's a real athlete, I mean, isn't he? Yeah, but, uh, athlete, you ever heard the name Donald Corey? Olympic star? Uh, well, he and I would compete in high school, and if you go back as far as 1966, I beat him in long jump. My I God. jumped 21 feet, 7 inches. My son owns the high jump record at Claremont College for the last 14 years. He's been over 7 foot. He owns the hop, step, and jump record. My grandson is the 36th gymnast in his class My in God. all of America. It's and it's only 12 genes, years. My mother was high jump champion. Wow. Uh, yeah, so it's nature and nurture. You heard it first here. Yeah. <laughs> My really, God. that's a joke. My that's God. A joke. How do you stay relevant the way you well, stay? One of the One of the things about staying relevant, and I think it's very important, is that on Saturdays, I mentor young pastors. And they come when I'm studying, and we talk about what they're going to preach in the morning. And it is interesting that while I'm mentoring them, yes. and even when we sit around talking, yes. that oftentimes I am just completely uh, flabbergasted by the approach yes. that young men have towards scriptures yes. because of the contemporary environment yes. that they're in connection with. Yes. So me being in connection with them keeps me in connection with the environment that they're familiar with. Because as we get older, not only older, as as we get in the eyes of people more accomplished, mm. then we become more iconoclastic in their eyes. Not that because one of my one of my chief uh, statements is that what I live my life by is never act as if what you have received is something that you have achieved. And that's, wow. that's because, because the, greatest, great. the greatest theologian of all times, yes. indisputably, is Paul. And he said, I am that I am by the grace of God. God. Today, the iconoclastic Hollywood type of pastor, and uh, which I fall in the category too, <laughs> is that people uh, give you an iconoclastic sort of a proclivity they, they have towards that. Yes. And at the end of the day, we're just like everybody else. Yes. And But what happens is they isolate you. Yes. But actually they, they're calling themselves insulated. Yes. Mm. You can't get to the past, yes. you know, uh, he's busy, he's hot, yes. uh, yes. he can't touch him, can't pay. he leaves before church is over. Yes. So he's insulated. Yes. But if you insulate him, you isolate him. And if you isolate him, then he no longer knows what people need. Yes. So he just tell him yes. what he knows. Yes. My God. And, and to tell you what I know yes. might not be what you need. Yes. So that's why you stay connected. Yes. Have to stay connected. The neurotic, the artists, and the preachers have to feel the change of the time. Yes. I mean, when, when Tina Turner sang, what did love have to do with it? It wasn't because she was so melodious yeah. or because she, she was a pulchitudinous splendor. Yeah. It was because she was in touch with the, the love of the times, yeah. the, the free, the, the sex. And, the, and then so her song was, what does love have to do with it? It became number one around the world yeah. because she was in touch. The neurotic, he flees when changes are made because he's living on the edge. Wow. And the preacher, if he is not in touch with what goes on in his world, he's obsolete. He's of no significance. Wow, that is so... Relevance, and, and I tell you another thing too, that, that uh, we could argue, and that is sometimes we're so caught up with our identity, we cease to be relevant. Jesus was so relevant, they didn't even know he was God. That's right. My yes. God. Yes. Um, didn't even know he was God. It seems to me you're a lyricist. Your words are like poetry. Well, uh, I, studied, I studied English literature, and I uh, studied under the British, uh, Hilary Belloc, Lord Tennyson. My God. I did even a little American uh, poetry, uh, Longfellow. And his heart was hot with it, like living cold. His heart was. My God. Elizabeth, Elizabeth do you know Burley. a little bit? Do you know a little bit of Shakespeare? Shakespeare, and... as you like it. My goodness. I did, I did that, Macbeth. 
the entire genre. Was, I had to do it. Had Absolutely. To do it. Didn't that like it. it. Had to study Latin. Did you say you didn't like it? Yeah, you know. You sound like you enjoyed it. <laughs> I, I, re I read poetry to my kids. Uh, Hilary Belloc. Uh, Matilda told such dreadful lies. They made one gasp and stretch one's eyes. Her aunt, who in her earliest youth had kept a strict regard for truth, attempting to believe Matilda. The effort almost nearly killed him. So, you know, I had to do a. Uh, Do people know that side of you? And, uh, they don't. Not too many. I, well, I, I, I'm enjoying this because I think you're in a state of glee right now and bliss, yes. having come from that glory cloud. Yes. Well,